Diego Corrales will forever remain one of the most tragic figures throughout pugilistic history. In the late 90s and early 2000s, the dynamic fighter with an unyielding heart was the embodiment of a comeback king, showcasing mind-blowing resilience. You all right? You all right? Devastating combinations. And a knockout power. Corrales better use the jab to set these things up, and there goes have propelled him to the pinnacle of the sport. But the illustrious career of this lightweight and super featherweight champion was cut short in the prime of his potential, suddenly and irrevocably. Today, we remember the legendary courage and dramatic path of boxing's unforgettable warrior. Born in 1977, Diego Corrales grew up tough in Sacramento's Oak Park neighborhood, dominated by the Oak Park Bloods gang. Guided by his stepdad, Ray Woods, Diego found refuge in the boxing gym at age four. However, things took a turn after he underwent a distressing incident where he witnessed the tragic death of his closest friend in a drive-by shooting. This was a devastating experience for Diego, and seeking structure, he turned to the Sacramento Police Athletic League Boxing Gym, where he developed his boxing skills. Not stopping there, he also went on to earn a culinary arts degree. But his skills in the kitchen are nothing compared to what he did in the ring, and it didn't take long for the public to feel the heat from his fist. At the beginning of his career, Diego moved to Las Vegas and started training with Olympic coach Ken Adams. He went on to amass an amateur boxing record of 105 and 12, primarily competing in the featherweight division. He represented the United States in the Pan American Games and the World Championship in 1995. In a heated battle in June 1996, Diego Corrales faced C.J. Canales in the junior lightweight divisions. Corrales, towering over his opponent, delivered fierce and direct punches. And a good left back from Corrales, who counter punches effectively. Well, look at these sharp punches from him. His height proved a clear advantage, allowing him to unleash precise hooks with devastating impact. Inside, some of the aggression from him. In a moment of sheer dominance, Corrales unleashed a ferocious assault, then sent Canales' mouthpiece flying from his mouth. Oh, there it goes, the mouthpiece out, and I think what happened, Canales... Despite Canales' resilience, Corrales maintained control. In the end, Corrales' relentless onslaught earned him a unanimous decision victory. So the winner is Diego Corrales. In October of the same year, Corrales squared off against Sergio Macias at Texas Station. Right from the start, Corrales unleashed thunderous left hooks and punches, leaving Marcias with an early black eye. Despite sustaining heavy cuts and enduring Corrales' relentless assault, Marcias fought on. However, by the fourth round, it was evident he couldn't defend himself. The referee intervened, calling the fight in favor of Corrales via TKO. A year later, in October of 1997, Diego Corrales faced Juan Angel Macias. By round two, Corrales delivered leg-paralyzing blows to Macias. Perhaps he has a statement to make himself. In that time, he is stung by the left by Corrales, and he goes down. While Macias bravely endured Corrales' onslaught, the ferocity took him by surprise, making him pose like a man reflecting on his life's choices. Surviving until the sixth round, Macias received one final devastating blow from Corrales. With Macias unable to beat the count, Corrales secured another victory. With a flawless record of 19 wins and zero defeats so far, Corrales faced Angel Aldama in Sacramento, California. Corrales wasted no time unleashing severe blows to Aldama's body. Who valiantly held on. With relentless ferocity, Corrales continued his assault. Throughout the intense brawl, neither fighter hit the canvas. Round four, the fight concluded with Corrales emerging victorious via unanimous decision. Diego Chico Corrales. Diego Chico Corrales. By 1998, Diego Corrales was a force to be reckoned with. He charged at Eduardo Contreras like a raging bull, both fighters unleashing their inner beasts. Corrales showed no patience, launching a full force assault, causing Contreras to stagger and cling to the ring ropes for support. In the second round, 
A brutal combination of powerful right and left hooks sent Contreras crashing to the canvas in disbelief. Where Contreras wants to be, but he gets caught with the lift and down he Despite goes. attempting to rise, his feet betrayed him, leaving him staggering. The referee halted the fight, awarding Corrales his 21st victory. At this juncture, it was evident that Diego Corrales was destined for greatness, bulldozing through his competition. But when it comes time to go to battle, it's live and let die. In a brutal showdown with Gary St. Clair, both fighters exhibited unwavering determination, trading blows well into the sixth round. Corrales showcased impeccable head movement. Despite the grueling contest lasting until the 12th round, Corrales emerged victorious via unanimous decision. The following year, Diego Corrales fought Claudio Martinet in a bout that marked his ascent to the professional spotlight. Though Martinet posed a formidable challenge with his short hooks and heavy punches. Now, what are the other questions about Corral, how successful he is at the real top echelon of Mr. Corrales remained resilient. By the sixth round, Corrales seized his moment, unleashing a thunderous right hook that floored Martinet. Leaving him unable to rise before the count. This decisive blow secured Corrales a victory via TKO. The next year, he leapt into professional boxing conquering the featherweight division with a sensational 28-0 winning streak. But his fight with the IBF super featherweight champion, Roberto Garcia, who already had 29 wins and zero losses, was sensational. In the sixth round, Diego hit his stride, unleashing a storm of powerful punches that left Garcia teetering on the edge. Soon, Garcia's bloodied body met the canvas. Corrales wasted no time, relentlessly pummeling Garcia's vulnerable face after he rose again. With two ruthless right-hand hooks from Corrales, Garcia on the canvas again. The fight continued for some rounds, but a lightning-quick 1-2 combo from Corrales in the seventh round made Garcia succumb to the ropes. Recognizing the dire situation, Referee Joe Cortez intervened without a count, mercifully preventing Garcia from enduring further humiliation. In a recent interview, Garcia didn't fail to recount how his fight with Corrales still keeps him up at night. That power was insane. Yeah. I still get flashbacks when I wake up. I wake up at night with flash flashbacks. Oh shit, so I'm sweaty, thinking, <laughs> Corrales hit me. In the September 2002 showdown with Angel Manfredi in El Paso, Texas, Corrales faced a challenger who was taking a risk by moving back down to super featherweight. Once the bell rang, it became evident that Manfredi was in over his head against Corrales. Angel's wobbled again, got big trouble facing him. Two minutes left in the round, Manfredi having trouble once again. With a precise hook, Corrales sent Manfredi sprawling to the canvas in the opening round. Unleashing a series of heavier blows, Corrales pounded Manfredi as if kneading dough for bread, delivering relentless blows until the referee intervened to halt the one-sided beat. That's it. The bravery of Angel Manfredi. And at this point, it seemed like Diego Corrales was now unstoppable. Diego Corrales defended his title against tough opponents like John Brown, Justin Juco, Derek Gaynor, and Angel Manfredi. Then in 2001, he faced Floyd Mayweather, both unbeaten. Even though Mayweather was ranked number two globally by the rank, Corrales was at number one. Both were 23, but Corrales had some advantages. He was taller and a longer reach and weighed more. Corrales was so angry with this decision and never wanted Ray Woods and his team again. But Floyd had some good things to say about Corrales. In the aftermath of the Mayweather showdown, things took a dark turn for Corrales. He faced charges for assaulting his pregnant wife, a troubling chapter that led him to choose a plea bargain. This decision landed the once rising star behind bars for a challenging 14 months. He didn't stay down for so long, and in 2003, Corrales returned to the ring, and after convincingly winning four matches, Damian Fuller, Felix St. Kitts, Roque Cassiani, Michael Davis, set his sights on facing the ring's number one ranked super featherweight, Joel Casimir. 
The second round opened with a foul hit from Kassmeyer. When it happened, but you can certainly no, 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 see. No, 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 no. In the third round, Corrales found himself on the canvas after a neat combination from Kassmeyer. Well, it is boxing hell when you have to fight your way back. The intensity escalated with both fighters exchanging blows. Kassemeyer was warned again for another foul. In the fourth round, a powerful face punch from Kassemeyer sent Corrales flying. Subsequent blows left Kassemeyer staggering to the floor in surprise. Yet Corrales faced another setback as the fight was halted due to two cuts inside his mouth. Clearly disagreeing with the decision, Corrales experienced disappointment once again. Undeterred, Corrales wasn't ready to give up. He would meet Kassemeyer again six months later at Foxwoods Resort in Connecticut. Corrales gave it his all. Delivering sleek punches and showcasing incredible head movement. Kassemeyer was equally relentless. And in the 10th round, he landed a powerful hook that sent Corrales rolling on the floor. And remember, wants, oh, oh. Down. Both fighters stood at the end of the 12th round, and Corrales won the vacant WBO Super Featherweight title by a split decision. As entertaining as this fight was, it was just a warm-up for Corrales before the ultimate battle of his life. Before facing Castillo, he had to settle some business with Acelino Fritas. Corrales and Fritas, both boasting impressive records, had a common opponent in the skilled Kassemeyer. The stage was set for a clash between two powerhouses with a combined 62 knockouts, promising explosive exchanges. However, in the opening round, it was the champion, Fritas, causing all the damage. Freitas looking the better of the two here in the opening round thus far. Fritas' dominance continued in round two, consistently landing hooks with both hands. For the right you just referenced, there was another one that landed by Freitas. I don't think they anticipated he could land those rights. Despite being shorter, Fritas proved more effective, dancing on the outside and leaping in with quick power shots. The momentum slightly shifted to Corrales in the fourth round. While Fritas landed sharper punches, Diego applied tremendous pressure. In the eighth round, the crowd chanted Chico, and Corrales responded with a stinging left hook. With heavier blows came newfound confidence. Confidence. And now, for the first time, Freitas... Corrales took over in round nine, landing a powerful right hook that dropped the champion a second time. An entertaining affair here. Under oh, right hand down goes Freitas again. Despite surviving past the ninth, Freitas couldn't withstand Corrales' assault. Under two minutes in the tenth, Corrales landed another hard left hook right hand combo. He's coming through with the jab. You can make the call. Well, come in left hand. Corrales pursued landing a right behind the ear, sending Fritas down a third time. Although the champion signaled readiness to continue, he unexpectedly surrendered, walking to his corner and waving his hand. Corrales versus Fritas was suddenly over. Charged with this sweet victory, Corrales faced Castillo and about hailed as one of the greatest in the last two decades. At the opening round, both fighters traded vicious power shots, the advantage swinging like a pendulum. Castillo just hammering the uppercuts. Castillo starts. By the eighth round, hooks and power shots escalated into titanic blows, both warriors fueled by unyielding determination. That's the will. He has the attempt. Right hand from Corrales. Castillo still wobbled from the last round. What the heart of a champion. You talk about a warrior. But he's trying to make something significant happen right now. Approaching the ninth round, it was clear that the fight was already becoming a strong contender for fight of the year. Both men bore the scars of battle, with Castillo cut above the left eye and Corrales suffering from badly swollen eyes. Castillo's feigned move paved the way for a devastating left hook. Seizing the chance, Castillo unleashed a right uppercut and another left hook. What a heart! Both fighters. Corrales went down hard, pulling his gum shield. Corrales, exhausted but explosive, dropped a dynamite right hand that left Castillo dangling on the ropes like a puppet with cut strings. Now he 
comes Canales. The crowd erupted as if electrified. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Diego Corrales. In April 2007, Diego Corrales faced Joshua Claudio. This fight is remembered for so many reasons. Taking on Claudio turned into a nightmare for Corrales. Claudio, visibly larger and stronger. Diego is moving around this ring and it is true to his work to try and be more tactical, but already Claudio was able to get in and land the left hook. Unleashed punches with formidable force and precision. There's that left hook combination, three, four in a row by uh, Joshua Claudio. Corrales, no passive target, countered Claudio's onslaught during the 10 round battle. A combination from outside, but so far the defense of Claudio, which is very good, has Weight played a crucial role in hindering Corrales from truly hurting Claudio. It's two good left hooks, this Claudio. Claudio really digging in. Yeah, Claudio's been down only once in his pro. The bout unfolded fiercely. In the first three rounds, Claudio relentlessly attacked, landing powerful punches in bunches. Corrales, not noted. Now England says keep your punches up to Corrales. This is Leaving Corrales struggling to defend. Here in round one. Oh, look at the body work by Claudio. Fantastic. In the ninth round, Claudi broke through, unleashing a barrage that staggered Corrales towards the ropes. Corrales is rocked. He's in trouble. Claudio wants to end it here. Midway a hard left and a devastating short right sent Corrales down for the first time. He landed some hellacious body punch. Oh, what is holding Corrales up? He goes down. Despite rising by 10. You gotta get the mouthpiece back. Get in the car. Get in the car. Come on, hurry. Corrales, with a badly swollen face, sought a fairy tale ending in the tent. But he had hurt Castillo before in that fight. He has not hurt Claudio in this fight. So that may be the big difference. Claudio landed another short right hook, sending Corrales down again. Rising, Corrales spat out his mouthpiece. Right hand. Leading to a point deduction. possibly saving him from a knockout defeat. Despite setbacks, Corrales survived the round. Judges awarded Joshua Claudio a unanimous decision victory. Standing here wow. in Springfield, Missouri, and Joshua Claudio drops to the canvas, so emotional. Just a few weeks after this fight on May 7, 2007, exactly two years after his memorable battle with Castillo, Diego Corrales met a tragic end in a harrowing three-vehicle accident near his Las Vegas home. The incident unfolded on Fort Apache Road in the southwest part of the Las Vegas Valley, where Corrales' motorcycle collided with the rear of a car. Propelled over 100 feet into oncoming traffic, he was struck by another vehicle. Rushed to the hospital in an ambulance, the unfortunate reality awaited. He was declared dead upon arrival. At the tender age of 29, Corrales left a lasting legacy, boasting an impressive record of 45 total fights with 40 wins, including a remarkable 33 knockouts. His untimely departure marked the end of a promising career and a tragic chapter in the world of boxing.